Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for pressing on play once again. And here we are narrating the life of my mother, Mrs. Elizabeth Amotashaw. And we find ourselves on the last part of the segment of her life that I've called World Traveller. And just in case uh, some of you are clicking on this for the first time, I will do a quick recap as we resume our journey of my mother. Um, those of you that have listened before will be able to see the outline of my mother's life of 92 years from 1930 to 2022. And this, as I uh, embarked upon this project to document her life, I did not realize that it fell into uh, thirds, essentially, more or less, of e almost equal duration, because I started off narrating her life in Nigeria in an effort to capture the booklet that she'd summarized in her intentions to, to write a book about her life in Nigeria of almost 30 years. And it occurred to me she, the first 30 years of her life were in Wales um, and meeting my father. And then when she came back to London after Nigeria, my father um, passed away uh, <clears throat> six years after that. And this uh, left her without a husband, um, but with a son who was moving all over the place. And she, she would visit me. And I realized she had 30 years of a world traveler before she lost her health at the age of 90 and had the last phase of her life. And this would be the last recording that I will do. But the last time I sat here, I almost covered this 30-year period of World Traveller. Um, but we had arrived back in London uh, in 2015, where my mother was no longer fit enough to fly around the world. And we embarked on some trips within the UK. And this will be the subject of my uh, narration today. Uh, Mum as world traveler, uh, but within her own country for the last five years of her traveling from 1915 to 2020. So I hope this is coming out clearly. And that's the, the master summary um, and it's the intention of our sitting here today with mum's world travels being effectively um, effectively summarized by uh, this uh, series of journeys from the UK out to Australia, Southeast Asia, Qatar, where I am now. Of course, the Nigerian uh, sojourn came first, the 28 years there. And now we're going to stay within the UK. But if you haven't watched any of the earlier videos, they cover all these journeys. Um, and of course, there's the special section on the life of my mum in Nigeria. <coughs> Just for completeness, um, my mother also crossed to see her friend uh, Dorcas in 1989. She made it across to the American continent, and I'm very pleased that she got to see that as well. So that encompasses the, the travels of my mum, uh, for which I'm very, very honoured to try to capture and show the flavour of her life. Um, but before I uh, do start on that, I would um, just like to say that uh, it's World Cup time here in Qatar. It's a once-in-a-lifetime occasion, and I've talked with great pride about my mother's uh, life uh, growing up in Wales and the fact that I was born there and uh, the pride of my mixed heritage, both Nigerian and Welsh. But the Welsh is coming to the fore at the moment because Nigeria didn't make it to the World Cup this time, hopefully next time. And I boasted my nine games, the games that are circled, and I'm sort of showing off a bit because it's 13 games now. Uh, my company gave me the game for the Welsh-Iran game and I purchased some more right through to the final. So we sit in this period of time here, happily waiting for the, um, the, the quarterfinals, two quarterfinals. 
I have two semi-finals and the final. So looking back on this years from now, um, if I ever watch this, I'll, rec I'll recall this very special atmosphere that we have here in, in Qatar. What an honor to host the World Cup. And uh, this is me outside my office, looking very proud with a huge Welsh flag sitting there. And that's my nameplate, Peter Omotashaw. Uh, later on, we put up all the flags but they said, go and put that Welsh flag outside Peter's office before we put the rest of them up. So that, wasn't that a nice, uh, a nice gesture? And then when I made it to the game, just to share a few more, I'm holding a little Welsh flag. I later bought a big one, but uh, it occurred to me I had a, a shirt with a dragon on, so I had two dragons. Uh, wasn't quite enough to defeat the Iranians, who scored two goals at the last uh, couple of minutes, which was rather frustrating. But uh, and I sat next to some Qatar Energy people from my company because this was the ticket from my company. And then standing in the stadium, the massive brand new stadium, there I am with my big flag, just to share the theme of Welshness that's been running through the narration of my mother's life. And I watched as much of their games as I could. Um, and uh, we played England and England, England defeated us. Um, and I met lots of Welsh people traveling back home on the metro and I looked up to the heavens and said, did I represent us well, mum? <laughs> and I think I got a nod from all the ancestors saying you tried. So this was so, so special. Um, but also now, uh, something I mentioned in the last segment was that uh, about my father, my father's mother, that we've concentrated quite a bit on my my mother's uh, side of the, uh, her mother and father, and uh, you've seen pictures of my grandfather and one of my grandmother. Um, and I said that I, I hadn't shown my, my grandmother on my Nigerian side, and I did look and find the picture of my, my father's parents. So before we start on my mother's journey, uh, I'm sure she'd be very happy for me to share these and add uh, two of uh, the chief which is my father's um, father, Bale, he was called. Um, he had two wives. Um, and this was the, uh, I think his second wife, I think, was my father's um, mum. And you can see that she's a very good looking lady with even features. And you'll see later on how my dad, how she resembles my dad. So here are the parents of my father. What an incredibly special picture that is. See her features. She looks very young. And I remember the chief visited him a few times up in the second floor of his big house in Alafara, in a part of Ibadan. Um, and if you just focus on those features, you can see a picture, the earliest picture I have of my dad. Look at this picture. Isn't this amazing? You can see the nose, similar to his mom. I really want to show off for dad today. So there he is. Very smart, smart as a tack. And at this stage, he'd He'd met my mum. I think they're probably engaged because this looks like graduation. This be graduation in Nottingham. He looks very young. You can still see the resemblance to his mum. And I put it to the jury that my father became more handsome as he went along. Um, but first of all, I'll show you how accomplished he was. Look at our house in Ibadan, just filling some of these in. When we came, uh, moved finally to Ibadan in 1967, 68, I've mentioned how we loved that house. Look at the grand, grandness of it. Massive compound. It, wasn't, it was too big to call a garden. It was called a compound. Surrounding it, I, I just come back from... Um, North Wales with my mum, because we'd gone there for the war for one year in 1967 to escape the Biafran War. 
So how accomplished my father, what a life he gave us. And then later on this picture, look at this amazing picture. I went to Nottingham University. I went to the same hall of residence as my father, Hugh Stewart. I was enrolling to start and they came to see me enroll before we headed off to, for a holiday to, or after we'd had a holiday to Rome, 1977. Look at that. We're a stone's throw from my, my old room and my father went there too. It's a hall of residence. See how dapper my dad looks. Mum looks quite 60-ish in a way, but it's 1977. Our afros are gradually shrinking. Richard's is shrinking. Simon still has a fairly big one. Look how accomplished he was. And whilst we were living in Nigeria, um, whilst they were living, Dad would go to various parties. It's not a great snap of my mum, but she still looks glamorous, but it's my dad I would, I would like you all to see. Cocktail party with work. Mum complimenting Dad ever so nicely. But I'll focus in on Dad's face. And I'm sure he'd be very shy not shy, but self-effacing, as I say, see how handsome my dad was. That's how I remember my father. And I think his looks matured into someone that was very, very attractive. What a couple, eh? What a couple. And I'll end, I showed my father's house uh, where we lived, but he had another house. And here it was, he opened a cafe. In challenge, the name of the area in Ibadan. So, I'd also like those out there in the world, these images of my father, to show the immense pride I have in um, them individually and as a unit, uh, to have made something work so well, um, which wasn't easy to do. Um, and I promise we will get on to the last part of the trip uh, of my mother's travels. But something else when we covered Asia, um, our last trip from Brunei uh, before I moved to Thailand was this remarkable trip to Vietnam. Fancy taking your mother to Vietnam of all places. And we stayed in this hotel called the Majestic. French architecture being done up, totally refurbished, astonishingly beautiful. And you can kind of look at the genteel streets there. Look at this thing, just from the side. We had a week in the Majestic Hotel in Vietnam, 2008. February or so. So I'm just fitting in pictures that uh, I missed out. Um, the other alternative is to do a video of things I missed out. And I'll just capture this one too, where we had uh, wonderful cocktails up on a roof and mum wore her print dress or whatever. I remember it very, very well. Mum used to say, I remember everything. When she'd lie in bed or whatever, and she'd think and she'd say, she'd go over all the places we'd been and relive them. And she said, I remember everything, Peter. And I remember everything as well. I remember how that we had that evening there. And then we took a trip into the countryside, to the caves, Chuchi Caves, where the North, North Vietnamese would infiltrate down south and they would go into caves and disappear and Think of the bravery of the claustrophobia and all that. And look at this stunning photo of what the Americans left behind deep in the forest of Vietnam near the Chu Chi Caves, Peter and Mum. Yep, massive American tank. And there we are, sporting my shirt open, it was hot. I'm really glad because I couldn't find the Vietnamese photographs and last night I found them and went, ah, here they are. And moving forward to Doha, two that escaped me, when I mentioned that my mum's um, was like Moses parting the Red Sea everywhere we went, people just welcomed her and just so happy that she was in their presence um, and that every trip was special, little outings. Mum never seemed to let it go to her head. Uh, but to me, it was quite a marvel to think um, of the effect she had on people and how they brought her roses once. And here are the a very, very posh hotel, and here are the footmen that saw mum, saw the roses and thought, no, we've got to give this lady flowers. And so, so 
I said, will you take a picture with mum on the way out? And here they are, they are from Kenya. Mum with her spontaneous gift of flowers. I think if you watched all my videos, you'll remember me telling you about this event. Well, I found the photograph of the flowers. I think it was a visit in 2013. She came four times to Qatar. Could have been 14. Now, this one was definitely 2014. My brother, Zach, and mum said he's my fourth son. And here he is. I'm in touch with Zach on almost a daily basis. He's still, we're still together in Qatar. Lovely, this one has a date. Um, April 2014. Mum had one more trip. And there she is in my apartment. Not the one where I am now. Uh, not too far from here, though. And that's Mum and Zach. So that's quite a bit of an intro. Uh, but I've captured uh, some things that got away that I think are... Uh, worth documenting because they're so special. But one more, one more thing to, to show about the uh, World Cup that you might find amusing. I, after all uh, the games were over for Wales and we'd been eliminated, I found this uh, garment. I haven't tried it on yet. You know how the Arabic uh, people wear the, uh, this over their head and then the, the white gown comes down and it circles their head? you know, the, the most common Arabic wear. Uh, well, this is that with a Welsh flag. So one day I'll put it on and take some photos of myself with this on my head and it coming down. So they've, um, they've thought of everything uh, for this World Cup. But really, really, it's been so special. I'm sure there'll be a lot of crackles on the mic there. And um, so now... Um, I, uh, once again, uh, mum and dad, ask for your guidance as I continue on um, with mum's travels from 2015 to 2020 within the UK. Um, it's not normal to hold maps to the, to the camera. I realise that, but uh, it's not a typical presentation where I could be standing in front of a slide show. And as you all know by now, I really like presenting. So um, what, a, what a subject for me to cover. Um, so we've covered the special pictures and, uh, that I missed earlier of mum's travels uh, in Asia and Qatar, and we've covered the extremely special photos of my father um, and his father, my grandparents on the Nigerian side. So I hope you really enjoyed uh, those and to show what an extraordinary man my, my father was. And, um, how he uh, was so uh, good and solid, uh, a, a human, uh, and especially towards my, my mum. So now, finally, we're uh, back in London, 2015, and you can see that uh, here we are. Here's London. And I'm going to summarise uh, for you the, where we're about to cover these five years. Mum and I said, right, OK. She said, I can't travel anymore, can't go international, no way. When you come over, we both decided, why don't we do some trips? I'll, I guess I'll hire a car, Mum. We'll go and look. And I tell you what, sneak summary, these places were all really, really impressive. Beautiful, beautiful, and really opened my eyes to the special place that the UK is. It's no ordinary place, I tell you. And we started off with a trip, uh, see if I can think backwards, in Terai. That was the first one, a stunning success. It was so good that the, this was early summer, 2016. It was 2016, yep. And then late summer, we did another one. I came, I came again for the second Eid holiday, and we, we headed up here on the advice of various friends. I think it was Claire that told us about Rye. She might even have told us about Lavenham as well, up there. And then the next year, in 2017, we went all the way down to this beautiful new forest area down here, which was driving through some of that. It was like unicorns would suddenly pop out of the forest. It was that beautiful, I'll tell you, hence the name New Forest. And then we ended up in uh, Ash over here and did a whole lot of coastal stuff um, in Mollard Manor. Each time we stayed in very posh bed and breakfasts, boutique bed and breakfasts, and spent five nights each time, which is about long enough. We'd head off on a Sunday, and we'd come back Friday evening. It seemed a lot longer. We, we also took in Cambridge. So this is what we're going to cover. 
these areas, I hope it's clear, it's the orange are the destinations uh, and the yellow is the places we drove to whilst we were uh, visiting each of the locations. Um, so starting off with uh, Rye, here we go, bigger map, homed in a little bit, drove down, two, three hours to get there, uh, not too far, uh, just about doable to get there in time for uh, ev in the evening. Um, and then we would, uh, or even after, even a late lunch, in fact, as you'll see, because that's what we did when we went to Rye. And then we traveled all around on day trips as far here, with all the yellow shadings, Devil's Dyke. Uh, and um, we had some water beach scenes um, in the uh, Eastbourne. Hastings, Folkestone, and my eyes just opened wide. So the best way to show you, because this was the first time I'd had a uh, holiday uh, with a car fully at our disposal, apart from the North Wales trips, which you've heard me say. And so the best way to perhaps uh, uh, show off how sweet these holidays were is uh, some photographs which are worth a thousand words. So first of all, you enter the main street in Rye and you can immediately see the charm of the place. And I encourage any of you to, who haven't to visit these places. They really are really, really lovely. Um, the only problem is the battling with the weather, as we know, is the, the blight of the UK. But there you go, you can start to see the charm. It just so happens that this is our hotel, the George. Very nice. There it is there, the George. You'll see a little bit more of that later on. Um, and so I... Um, we put our bags in the car, walked down the street further. You can see the charm of the place and headed for this pub here. That's the first thing we did. And awaiting us, because we'd booked, was this amazing Sunday lunch with roasts. Um, uh, Yorkshire pudding and a roast and I said I want enough gravy that I can get in the Yorkshire pudding and sort of row down the, a river of gravy like a boat I said <laughs> and that's how much I want um, and you can see there we are dining uh, on the classic British Sunday lunch which was amazing afterwards we had sticky toffee pudding which was absolutely phenomenal and on the advice of Richard, my brother, who told us uh, that this was a beautiful place, we took a very long drive, and it was raining as well, in our nice Mercedes A-Class rent rental from uh, Rye, all the way to through the top part here to Brighton to a place called Devil's Dyke, to have a view down from the dyke across to the sea, because it's a high, a high area, Devil's Dyke. What an interesting name. And we did do that, and here's Mum standing at Devil's Dyke. Looking a little windswept, but we made it. And it was very memorable. So there was that, we drove all the way back. One of our other drives, I don't remember the particular location, you can see the classic architecture. Where else can you see something like that? Look at that castle, it's just like a uh, stereotype, isn't it? Stereotypical castle. Stunning for me. Uh, gives me the tingles, just things like that. And uh, as we were um, within striking distance of Dover, uh, oh yes, we did, we did get to Dover. Dover's all the way uh, out here. You probably know they have white cliffs. So we came out, so all the way to Devil's Dyke, and then all the way across there. A lot of driving to Dover, this last bit in Dover. And there are the, the impressive white cliffs, look at that. Dwarfing you, as we were in the car park. So already every day we do something interesting. Um, that's why the five nights were uh, enough, really, um, because 
uh, it's quite quite wearing to go out uh, on a mission. I think we'd have a, the Wednesday we wouldn't go anywhere. Um, and next to Rai, uh, <coughs> this map probably does it better. <coughs> next to Rai uh, is a big flat beach called Kamba. Very very impressive. There it is. Just just. Yeah, so Rai's got the charm of the cobble streets and all that. Uh, and by this time, Mum, Mum could walk unaided. Uh, she was a little bit unsure of herself, but anyway, here we are sitting in Kamba. There's Mum. We had a very nice sunny day. And Mum is there, really enjoying this trip away, and she's happy for me as well. And then the last day before we headed off, got this lovely photo of the posh Mercedes sitting outside our beautiful hotel which sort of sums up the classiness of the occasion. We also had a very nice uh, room with a heated floor. I always remember that. That's the method of heating. It was through the floor. Uh, fantastic breakfasts. The Brits uh, specialize in that. And then we returned, and that was the um, July 2016. So our first uh, trip was a stunning success. And that was the Eid holiday, where everything shuts down in Qatar for a week. So two and a half months go by, and there's another Eid. So that took us to late summer 2016, September. And so I said to mum, um, or we both said to each other, should we do another one? And as you know from my summary, we did. We headed up from London, and we headed to... <coughs> Lavenham, which is on the way to Cambridge. And perhaps I should use the overview uh, again, uh, the overview map, to show that. Right, so we just did uh, Rye. Yep, we just did Rye. And now we're going to go up here to Lavenham. Cambridge is here. Head up in this direction. Oh, it's a bit further, isn't it? Especially since we're coming from the south. Rye was a hop and a skip. Now, that's why we went straight for lunch, just popped down to Rye and for lunch and stayed five days. But this uh, was much further. Somehow, I still think we managed to get there for lunch. I really do, because we had a magnificent lunch when we got there. Um, anyway, so homing in on Rye, that's the circle um, in orange. This I should not have circled in orange because it was Bury St. Edmunds. We just visited that. Cambridge we visited. This one up here we visited uh, Tet Tet Tetford. And um, Tetford, yeah. And Southwold was a seaside town. And for some reason, Mum particularly liked that. She said she wanted to see the sea. It was important for her to see the sea. I remember her stressing that. Um, and it was Southwold, and we took a photo together that we framed, and I've got that photo to show you. It sits in the, in the flat. So there we went, and Lavenham was a fantastic accommodation as well. Uh, it's famous for being twee and uh, cultural. Bury St. Edmunds is as well. So we had a marvelous time touring from Lavenham uh, to these places in yellow. This should have been just yellow, yeah, the Bury St. Edmunds. And Cambridge, fantastic along the River Cam. Got a, uh, an amazingly lovely uh, photo of that. Um, and so I'll start showing you the accommodation. And the accommodation was called the Swan. And it's as much character inside as it has outside. Look at that building, 17th century. Higgledy piggledy stairs and everything. Really, really charming. Once again, incredible breakfasts. Oh gosh, we were happy. And at night, it lights up very nicely. Have a look at that. Isn't that wonderful? And as we arrived there, uh, we made it for lunch. We must have set off very early. Another magnificent Sunday lunch, and we ate in this stunning restaurant. Of course, the hotel main eating room. Hope these are hope I'm holding these correctly. Look at that ceiling. And just parked across the road uh, where there was uh, some store, 
just to show off the car, as I will each time. This time we went for an Audi sports car. Now that was very powerful and uh, well appointed. Both a little bit low and cramped for mum, but you see she could still manage that at 86. Not bad, eh? Getting in and out of that at 86. I certainly enjoyed uh, learning about the modern cars. And um, I'll show you now Southwold, the, uh, I'm probably mispronouncing it, the uh, seaside town. And there's mum and I standing at the end of the pier. And we framed that photo. For some reason she was happy to be in this town. So there we were. And that's the view looking from the pier. Typical British seaside town. That's what you can expect. So I should be employed by the tourist guide, shouldn't I? Because I'm a big advocate for uh, what Britain has to offer. We went to um, some park somewhere, I don't know where, Bury St. Edmunds, uh, could have been, Thetford. Anyway, you can see um, I would push mum because it was getting a bit much to walk these distances and just a lovely photo in lovely surrounds on that trip of mum and I in the wheelchair that would collapse and fold into the back seat still. Then we did a very special trip to Cambridge and I managed to get parking in the Hilton. God, I was a bit, uh, uh, had to be pretty uh, slick about that. And here's, here we are sitting in the back garden of the Hilton uh, as the river cam flows by. Stunning. There's mum. She could just about do it. She didn't have lots and lots of energy. We had to, we had to really ration ourselves. But there she is sitting, reclining there, and just about managing to have one standing up with me with a river cam in the back. And we, people were punting, going past punting on the river cam. I never thought I'd see the river cam with my mum in Cambridge. I went there many, many years ago in 1977. And um, yes, that was, a, that was a beautiful trip as well, a special, special memories. Someone fell in the river that day. <laughs> So there we are. And in Bury St. Edmunds, just, uh, just to show you the sort of stunning um, creations that you can see, look at this perfection here. This is under the wing of what was then Prince Charles, now King Charles. Uh, he likes architecture as well, and there's some kind of trust that he's involved with that this was restored to an incredibly high value, high standard. It sits on the edge of a park in Bury St. Edmunds. You're almost out of a fairy tale, isn't it? So for me, seeing things like that, and with my mother, was absolutely remarkable. So another stunningly successful trip, and I came back to London and flew back to, to uh, Qatar for, to resume uh, work in 2016 um, uh, September. And so now we... Um, we turn the clock to the next year when I came in um, June uh, 2017. And this time we decided to go to the New Forest, as I mentioned to you, looking at the master, the master map here. Where we go from London, how far would this one be now? Ooh, one of the furthest, oh no, because we live, let me see, where do we live? Southeast, yeah. So we live in the Southeast and um, We'd have to go all the way here, pretty far. Gosh, just shows how close Rye was. So we'd go all the way down. We went all the way down here, almost as far as the, the Lavenham trip to the New Forest. And the areas in yellow were areas we, we drove. Portsmouth is there. Bournemouth, ah, we went to Bournemouth, which you, you'll soon see. And we stayed in this green bit, which is the New Forest. Um, and Mum said that she liked the... Uh, well, now let's home, home in on it. Here we are. So now we home in on the, the map. I've just mentioned to you that this is where we were staying, in the middle of the green forest. Um, Brockenhurst was the place. Uh, my nickname is Sway, and it was on Sway Road. I always felt that was quite interesting. Sway Road goes down there. <laughs> we took a trip to Bournemouth, which was very interesting. I remember the drive. 
And then we also uh, took a trip to... Um, Oh yes, Milford on Sea, Milford on Sea, and we watch the ferries going. And Mum likes the Isle of Wight. Look how close the Isle of Wight is. The Isle of Wight never been, but Mum's been there many times and has memories from when she was younger. And the um, uh, Milford on Sea is where the ferries left, and we sat there and took some sun. Um, but then we had to drive down here and all the way around and round and deep, deep, deep here to Ords this little peninsula called Swanage, and it absolutely poured with rain. It was huge amounts of rain, but it cleared up by the time we got there and we had a tea and coffee. Um, and so now I shall show you some pictures of this new forest. Um, and of, of all the trips, mum said she liked, um, even though the other uh, locations were, were very good, um, for some reason, um, Mum, uh, oh, just before we go there, um, after we came back from Lavenham, uh, on the advice of Shenley, uh, it's a marvellous friend of my mother's, uh, two weeks after that trip or so, we went down south about 30, 40 minutes south of Croydon. Um, I haven't mapped it out, not too far from uh, where we live. We went for this um, Botley Hill farmhouse, Botley Hill farmhouse, and this was the picture that I used for my mother's profile picture on her WhatsApp. Those of you that knew and loved her may remember, if you ever sent Mama WhatsApp, this was when it occurred in uh, September 2016. This was a special trip. It had quite some significance. Um, Mum was tired that day, but she still took a good photo. Uh, after a sun special Sunday lunch. So even after Lavenham, we take trips. We do things on a Sunday. Where should we go? Day trip. Let's go here. Like we're always searching for places to go. You'll see some of Hever Castle later, where I'd make use of this hire car. I'd hire it for the whole duration so that it was available to me. And then we would, um, we would head off to uh, places like that, apart from these big trips anyway. But now back to 2017, uh, June, July. And here we are in uh, the New Forest. So, um, <clears throat> uh, I tell you what, I, I, uh, I still can't go to the New Forest yet. I've jumped ahead of myself because um, uh, I mentioned that we went uh, to uh, the Lavanum in September 2016 in the second Eid holiday. And then I've told you we went on this day trip to uh, Botley Farmhouse, this one. And then uh, I came for Christmas in 2017. Um, and so I uh, hired a car and said, Mum, let's do some trips. Mum was a little bit negative about it. Oh, it's so cold and everything. And we drove around, um, set off early and had some really, really nice bleak trips through forests with just like no uh, leaves. And they looked just like twigs or sticks, a very stark contrast. Somehow it was uh, bleakly beautiful. And she, admi she admitted later that um, she'd been overly negative and she enjoyed it. So these are the uh, February 2017 winter trip where we stopped at a pub and had a very nice photograph which we put in a frame later on. See mum with her pose and her pearls and smiling perfectly there. <laughs> Man, she could take a photo. So that was just a, a stopover as we drove uh, what was the location we were driving. Somewhere that was within, could have been near Box Hill. Um, and then on the way back, we stopped at another pub and took this rather famous photo, which we also put in a frame. Um, there we are, sitting, mum smiling, and we've got that mural that's sort of growing out of our heads there. Many people like that photo, and uh, I made a frame of it. And then we took a trip to <laughs> Crystal Palace Park in that same winter, 
And look at mum with her hat and scarf. Look at that charming photo of my mum. February 2017. So these photos show that we finished with the big international trips, but we were still the traveling team, either for big five-day trips away or anything we could get our hands on. <laughs> All I needed was a rental car, and it turned out I was quite good at reading maps and uh, finding my way around. No issue. Uh, Mum used to marvel, so how do you, especially that first trip to Rye. She said, how did you just take it under your belt, Peter? So I was lucky that that uh, came easily to me. So now finally we get to uh, 2000 and, uh, June, July 2017, after the winter, after the, uh, the February uh, 2017 winter snaps. I had gone back to Brunei, I've got to Qatar and come back and now finally uh, showing you the new forest. So as I mentioned, mum liked the new forest uh, accommodation. It was a converted house into a bed and breakfast with two extraordinary uh, staff, the husband and wife team, who, who had done it up to literally a five-star standard. It doesn't do it justice from looking at the, from the outside. And the breakfasts were famous. My God, did they do breakfast. They beat all the other breakfasts, even though those were hands down. So there it was, Daisy Bank Cottage. Boutique, very boutique. Fantastic service, amazing breakfast, lovely room. And now we'd finally wised up and said, well, for heaven's sake, mobility issues, Peter. This wheelchair is very necessary. Let's get ourselves an X-Trail. And this was the car that impressed me the most. Parked right outside our room. Absolutely fantastic uh, Nissan X-Trail. I can only imagine how advanced they are now because I, I found it such an advanced car. And so there is our bay window. You can see the... Um, <coughs> just behind the car is... We could see the car from the bay window, because there we were in the front. And uh, it's funny I didn't take the bathroom, all the posh baths and all the tiled floors and everything. It was completely renovated inside. So this was the, this is our room. There we were, you can, you can see the sort of bay window. So we'd come back there every night and um, We'd find somewhere to eat, come back there, sleep, and then wake up to the fantastic breakfast. Amazing she could keep doing this at 87. She really, really tried. So now the new forest, what can we say? Let me give you one picture which probably summarizes some of the things you could see within the new forest. Well, mainly it was the trees, but I haven't managed to capture those. But look at the pristine nature of that. I hope it's coming through. How serene, how amazing. How British, how English even. So for any of you that haven't made the adventure, um, and perhaps the COVID forced people to stay within the shores of the UK and made other people appreciate it, I'm not sure. Um, and so I mentioned uh, the, uh, watching the ferries head off to Isle of Wight. Um, and this is where we were. Mum was taking a rest in the wheelchair. Um, and so we had coffee there and watching the ferry depart. Huge thing. And then I took this photograph of Mum. So I was pushing her more and more by this stage. So those are some of the images of the trip um, to Lavenham, uh, to the, to, sorry, to the New Forest. Uh, June, July 2017. And uh, so next, uh, uh, have I skipped any? Um, oh yes. Of course, the two very important photos. I mentioned Bournemouth. Bournemouth is very important. It's a huge place. I met a, a lady, an American lady, come to watch the World Cup, and she studied in Bournemouth. I met her two days ago, and I thought, my God, what a small world. So here we are at Bournemouth Pier. 
because we took a day trip to Bournemouth from New Forest. As you've seen from the map, it wasn't far. And once again, you can see Mum's effervescent spirit, uh, determined to be jovial, because uh, she wasn't feeling so strong. Um, but look, I'll, I'll get a little bit closer. And you can see her friendly nature having a bit of a fun with the person that was going to help us take the photo. So there we are on Bournemouth Pier. We just had a coffee and a pie or something, and I remember Mum wasn't quite the best, but she perked up uh, at that time, and I pushed her all the way back and into our waiting, our waiting car. Uh, we were determined that nothing would stop us from our, uh, our journeys. And that's just to show you again where, where that was, Bournemouth. Da -da. So we were staying there, and we made the trip to Bournemouth, all the way there. And I showed you Milford, keep forgetting the name of this, Milford-on-Sea, where we were watching the ferries. And we travelled within the forest. You've seen one of those beautiful pictures. And then um, we uh, took the rainy trip all the way down to Swanage. And I have a picture of the car that I'll show you in Swanage. So here's Swanage. Swanage was quite interesting. Showing off the X-Trail. I think Mum's sitting in the X-Trail. So there we were, admiring the, that part of the world. You can see it had been raining somehow, yeah. Um, and that took us to uh, June, July 2017. So uh, I won't make the same mistake as I did last time and jump to the next year because before we went on the next big trip, um, June, July 2017, we'd just done uh, New Forest, as I've mentioned. So um, in September, I came again, and we did uh, Hiva Castle. We didn't do a, a second big trip, but we still did a, a, a full day trip to Hiva Castle. And how interesting for me that I've managed to chart the route 58 minutes only 23 miles. Wow, look at that. Only 23 miles away. 58 minutes. So you can see, if you've got a bit of an imagination, there's plenty of places to go. My mum was doing it for me. She says, I don't really need to see another castle, Peter. <laughs> she toured castles with kids and trips till she was blue in the face, and she'd seen lots of them. But they meant more to me, because I got quite a buzz out of all these things. And there, there was the entry to Hever Castle. And I think the reason I chose to even show this was I'm very, very happy with this photo. Look at this photo. Oh, gosh. And with my mum and the background. Because Hever Castle had lakes and gardens and all sorts of things. It was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But isn't that a keeper? And once again, you can see my mother's face. Charming, photogenic beyond belief. I used to wonder why she was so photogenic. So I think it's very beautifully framed. Very rare. Like a mystical lake. Like out of some science fantasy movie. Beautiful. What a great memory. September 2017, Hever Castle. So have I missed anything else out? We went to a famous uh, Art Deco house. I, I couldn't uh, find the name. Uh, what a pity. But it's just uh, quite famous. And it's about seven miles from us, within London itself. Some millionaires house anyway I'll just show it anyway you can 
catch a glimpse from the ceiling that there's some Art Deco magnificence going on there, owned by some very famous people. So that's another little day trip we did. And then that uh, finished off 2017. So mum... Uh, and I both knew, and especially mum, that she probably had one more trip away in her because it was strenuous to wake up in the morning, tour around uh, the countryside, come back, sleep and have a huge breakfast. <laughs> we couldn't resist the breakfasts. Those would finish us off. We used to have the breakfast and go back for a little bit of a rest into the room and then head off for our trips. So managed to find one more posh uh, I'm not sure who gave us the pointer on this one, but after a little bit of research, you can see London here, and we headed off to a little town called Ash. Nothing famous about the town, but the accommodation had been an old building that these people had lovingly turned into boutique bed and breakfast. But it turned out to be a good trip because there was so much coastal work. Look at all the yellow shading where we went. My God, Mum said she'd like to see sea. We certainly did. I'll have to rattle off some of the names. You'll be very familiar. Whitstable, Hearn Bay, where mum had a friend. Margate, Broadstairs, which was quite beautiful, Broadstairs. Sandwich, which literally was the Duke of Sandwich who invented the sandwich, literally. Then Deal, we went to Deal and we went to Dover again. And we passed through Canterbury. So just all within that little space, all these famous places. Um, quite, quite, quite remarkable. And of course, I've expanded on them. So there they are, once again. Canterbury, Whitstable. Uh, trying to read it backwards. Hearn Bay. Broadstairs. West, Westgate on Sea. <coughs> Dover, down here. And we visited all of them. Um, so once again, pictures being worth a thousand words, uh, I, should, I will be able to share with you some wonderful images. So as we drove down to Ash, to our uh, posh boutique bed and breakfast, always heading off on a Sunday, we thought, look, it's a bit... Uh, we won't race down there. We'll stop at a nice pub and have a Sunday lunch on the way down. And I got this, I think, very, very nice photo of mum once again. Look at that portrait of her. Just having had a, a very satisfying lunch, looking slightly tired. And we ate heartily and headed on our way. So, and this awaited us, Mollard Manor, which was done up to a very high standard, another posh boutique bed and breakfast. And let me get this right, that was our room. There we were, we had a fantastic room and it looked out uh, to a lovely view. Um, it really was great. With very nice, friendly staff. Fantastic. So we chose well for Molad Manor. And on the advice of uh, Kate, not too far from Ash, and I haven't had time to look it up, is a river. Uh, a fairly famous river. Don't tell me it's the beginning of the Thames or something. Um, anyway, we took a trip, and for Mum to negotiate the uh, to get down there was not easy. We had to go downstairs, um, two three flights on the side to get down this embankment to the river, and oh, we uh, we thought no way. But Mum refused to give in, and just step by step by step by step by step, we kind of helped her down. It's remarkable we even made it. But anyway, we took the, 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 the trip in this boat. There are lots of rushes coming up along the sides. We sometimes couldn't see much, but the rushes, they were quite tall. But on the way back, 
we took this photo in the boat, more like a barge type thing. There we were, sitting in our boat after our trip. You can see, yeah? Um, so we did uh, enjoy that, and thanks Kate for the heads up about the, the river trip. Um, and as we drove around the, uh, the area, um, <coughs> we did manage to get some very nice photos. Um, this was just uh, next to the, um, the, the river. Uh, adjacent to where we'd gone for the river was this uh, house, uh, stately home, house and gardens, and my God, they were outstanding. This picture doesn't do it justice at all. You can see mum in her wheelchair because I would push her around. Of course, she could walk and her glasses to protect her eyes. Bless her. It was absolutely stunning, I have to say. The colours, the picture, picture perfect. Really, really amazing. So I hope by now you can start to see that uh, there's some tremendous sights and sounds to be seen around the UK. Um, and um, this, uh, this one uh, would show mum, well, first of all, I'll just, I'll say, let's show off the car. This time we got a uh, Toyota RAV4. I wanted an X-Trail, but they didn't have X-Trails. Still quite good. Toyotas, of course, great cars easily fitted the wheelchair. So this was our metal steed pointed out to sea. You remember there's so many seaside locations. I'm not sure which one it was, um, but you can see typically what one of them might have looked like. There you go, your pebbly beach, your classic British or uh, English pebbly beach with no sand. Still looking quite full of character. And then this nice one of mum in the car, looking out again to yet another sea scene. That's the, her vista, that's how she enjoyed herself. And we'd stop for toilet breaks and we'd have coffee, we had a flask, we had sandwiches, we were very organized. Um, and then we got to see Dover again, because it was within striking distance. And this time you can see a little bit more of the white cliffs of Doha. Not Doha, Dover. <laughs> I've been here quite quite a while. <laughs> White cliffs of Dover. There's not a cliff inside here. So that was very, very uh, special. And there's something I just want to check here in real time, because this next photo was um, a very special one. And I'm trying to, I'd like to see the location of it. Sandwich. Ah, yes. Yes, I think. That's right. Gotcha. It was in this, it was in this area. I told you we went down that river. Now I do believe that river continues and somewhere within this green area, yes, why, ah that's it, it's coming back to me now, why, yeah, somewhere within this deep green area, there were, there were scenes of extraordinary beauty and that same river uh, occurred somewhere within here. And that's where I got this photo, which I think is just absolutely stunning with the river and the bridge. With tea and scones, riverside, in a very lovely pub. You can see the pristine conditions. It's picture postcard, isn't it? The river, the weeping willow, the bridge, the tea and scones, the wonderful mum. Look at her face. I 
I think I've got some framing to do when I have free time. So we got that wonderful, wonderful photograph together in that area. Turned out that it was a, a, such a rich wealth of uh, scenery to choose from. And then before we wound our way home, I think it was the, the day before, where were we now? Sandwich. Um, could it have been in the suburb of Canterbury? It wasn't Canterbury. Mm. But anyway, can't quite remember, but there was a charming town. And uh, we sat on the, um, this stone wall. Look at the, and look at the bricks that the church is made of, the stones. And it was, it was a town that was quite uh, touristy uh, and well-known. Could it have been Ash itself, as I check? Could it have been Sandwich, maybe? Anyway, it was nice, even though I don't remember the name. And then we said goodbye to Molad Mana, and as we, it was my birthday. So it just so happened on the 22nd of June, 2018, that was the morning we left. And we said goodbye, and we took a photo at the, at the, at the gate, at the door, uh, as we headed into our car to head home. Mum was struggling at this stage, and she wasn't feeling too good, but she, her energy was low, but she managed to, uh, we stopped and found somewhere for my birthday dinner on the way home. And this would have been Mum and I's last birthday dinner outside, I believe, because this was our last big trip. Uh, and here we are, still the same day, Halfway home, 22nd of June, 2018, Peter's birthday with mum, having lunch, dinner, sorry, on the way home. Mum just hanging in there. Um, and I hope these are coming visible to you. So it was a nice memory. Um, and... Uh, That took us to uh, 22nd of June, 2018. Um, but before I went back, uh, still had the car, before I headed back to Qatar, we were looking up parks and where to go and green bits and we found another green part to go, not far from where we lived. Oof, heading past um, Bromley, somewhere. Um, these locations escape me at the moment, but we found a park stopped the car, got mum out and pushed through these green bits. Um, it was somewhere we hadn't been before. It wouldn't have been more than six miles from our house. But I've got, just want to show this one off because of mum. And again, her amazing, uh, she's sitting in the wheelchair. And I don't know why she always seems to emanate, and always manage to emanate goodwill as it flows out of her when there wasn't too much to be happy about, with her failing energy levels and being chair, not quite chair bound, she could walk but not long distances anymore. So that was September 2018. Just another of our trips, but a smaller one, a smaller trip. And by this stage, mum, again, uh, was weakening, but I was determined. Um, uh, so this, that, that photo I've just showed you was uh, July, early July 2018, after the trip to, um, uh, to uh, Molad Mana and Ash, the one I just showed you, the big trip. And I had another trick up my sleeve. Uh, I got in touch with the, the people um, at the hotel at the top of the Shard, the tall pointy building in, in uh, London. And I organized a trip for mum. And when they learned of her age and everything, they said, we will give your mum some free petit foie or whatever. And I thought, oh God, here we go again. They're doing it in London, which is a credit to them, I must say, showing it didn't only happen in Doha. 
And so in July 2018, not long after we'd come back from Walad Manor, uh, I still had the car. I was determined to get m for mum to see the view. Um, and so here we are, uh, Sunday I think it was, we headed off, had it all booked, and we headed up, got to the approaches. Um, I drove the car and they valet parked it for me. There it is, it's predominantly owned by Qatar. I forget what percentage, but the majority share is, uh, it's a Qatari building, oil and gas money. So let's hope that's coming across. Uh, structurally, I thought it was very interesting as well. And then this was what they, uh, this is what they gave. Of course, we, we bought uh, coffee and some things, but they provided the, those petit foie, whatever they call, free. And they said, what do you want to put on it? We'll put a little message. And, it, and I said, put the best mum in the world. So that's what it says in the writing there. You might be able to just make it out. And going up in the elevator, mum found it hard to stand for too long. She's never been able to stand for too long. So it took, you know, not to say a lot out of her, but she had to sort of steel herself to pull the trip off. But my gosh, I think it was worth it, because here we are eating our little petit foie, looking down, right down on the River Thames. So she got to see, I was determined she should get to see this view, the best view in London. I wanted her to see it. So there she is. And sometimes just enjoying it for the sake of me, I'm sure. It was a memorable trip, and I got another photo of her in the foyer, which is equally as impressive. And you can see there she is, with London at her feet, before we headed back down and hopped into our car again. Everybody was so kind and nice, and it was great to be a tourist with Mum in London. Um, July 2018, and I'd say that this was my last trip out with my mum, when she could actually walk or stand, because in the next summer of July 2019, when mum had said, look, I have to hang up my, my shoes, even for these week-long trips, just like five, four years earlier, I hung up my travel shoes for, for flights, international flights. And instead, Richard and I, Richard treated me to a trip to Poland for some, uh, a long weekend. And so I did get to go overseas the 2019 and, and travel, but not with mum. She knew she couldn't do it. She stayed in. So this trip to the Shah, 2000, July 2018, I would say was my last outing with my mum, uh, where she was able to walk, go under her own steam. Um, but what a trip to end with, July 2018. Um, and she was 88 then. Um, and it was beginning to show uh, that you can't be uh, getting about uh, that easy when your energy is, is low. Um, so the next phase of my presentation to you from that July 2018 to uh, May 2020, uh, when my mum turned 90, uh, July 2018, 2019. So then we've got a year, we've got two years to cover. And those two years I shall call uh, staying in Marlow Court because um, this uh, truly then would take me to the end of the, uh, the phase um, of mum's, uh, what I've called her, uh, world Traveller, um, and I have included uh, it as, as World Traveller because um, 
if I can just find the uh, summer, summary here. Just give me a second. Yes, oh, I found it. <coughs> because the last part of mum's life starts in 2020 when her health went down due to her fall. And we are still in 19, uh, sorry, 2018. So we've got two more years to go to finish this world traveler part of my mum's life. Even though in those last two years she wasn't really uh, world traveling. Uh, but she was still able to walk um, around the flat. She could go for little trips. Um, but the trip to the Shard was, I counted it as the last major trip because that was a big trip to go there, park, get out, ballet park, go on the elevator, walk, sit there, come back. It, was, it had many, many parts to it. So anyway, from July 2018, uh, when we did that trip to the Shard, to um, her, her birthday uh, in 2020, when she turned 90, was a year and a half period, which I've called staying in Marlow Court. And I just want to show Marlow Court, because now remember, mum is, this is going to be where she stays. Um, and then, um, He, this is a bit of a cheat because it's from 2016. It's from, it's from two years earlier, which is fine. But it just shows Marlow Court. It frames mum in front of her Marlow Court, which she so wisely bought in 1977. It says Marlow Court there. And she's standing, probably about to see me off as I travel. Um, this picture was taken on the 3rd of October 2016, so I probably would have been heading off. But isn't that a nice one of her standing in front of Marlow Court. I want to introduce Marlow Court because it becomes important, because it becomes where she spends now for the rest of her life, the greatest majority of her time. She's not going overseas. She's not even going away for a week. At best, she'd go out for a trip to Dulwich Wood Park uh, or something for two, three hours and come back, but always come back. No nights away, uh, no overnights. Uh, that was too much. Uh, day trip at the very most and come back. So that's why it's important to show this part of her life as Marlow Court, because that's all she saw. Luckily, there's a photo of uh, both of us taken the same day. Um, how, I, how we pulled that off, I'm not sure. I must have been not leaving. But there we are, two of us again, standing outside what will now be where she will remain for almost the rest of her years within these walls of the flat of Marlow Court. There she is. So I think that uh, frames, uh, frames it quite well. Um, so now, while she was inside the uh, flat, and in fact, let's, uh, let's just go a little bit to, um, to the uh, maps to show where uh, where Marlow, where Marlow Court uh, is. Ah, we did have one trip to, to Box Hill, um, but I will show that later on. Uh, we had previously had a trip to Box Hill, um, which I didn't feature because, of course, we can't feature all all of the um, all of the places. But what map to show you? London, yes. So London, um, <clears throat> just go back to these maps here. Anyway, I shall show you the, <clears throat> the south of London. Ah, 
Ah, good. Good. That's good. Just to show you um, where we are. So there's London, there's the River Thames, and that's Crystal Palace. That's where we are, southeast, southeast 19. This is where our flat is. This is the Marlow Court that we're talking about. It doesn't show the complete uh, top part, northern part of uh, London, but there's Islington there, Hackney. Um, London, of course, extends a little bit further to, to the north. But you can see the Crystal Palace. This is what I'd like to home in on, Crystal Palace. So uh, if we home in on uh, Crystal Palace, uh, yes, I really had to set the scene because otherwise you don't know where we are in London, but south of the river. And um, I'm going to home right in now on the Crystal Palace area. Here it is so that you can know where mum spent so much of her time. Uh, she bought the flat in 1977, but now we're getting to the stage where that's all she sees. This is now the, the uh, Marlowe Court part of mum's life. So there we are, tucked next to that bend. This park is famous, and you, this will feature a little bit. It's the Crystal Palace Park. It has a lake there with a special uh, theme of dinosaurs, which uh, you might see later on. Um, I think mum chose quite well. Uh, there was a number three bus to Brixton and all the way to Oxford Circus. And we would have a, uh, also, uh, um, I'm looking for the, um, <clears throat> the Gypsy Hill. Yeah, there it is. I should color, color that in yellow because this featured so, so largely in our lives over all the years. And mum would have done it so many times. We're living in the orange part where the flat is, you'll see later, and we'd walk to this yellow train station, Gypsy Hill. I've got a lovely photo of mum at Gypsy Hill. I, I wish I'd uh, printed it out. And we'd head up to Victoria. That's the way we'd go. Or we'd catch a bus there, number three, and go to Brix via Brixton. You could hop out of Brixton and get the tube, uh, the Victoria Line, to Victoria again. Or you could continue in the number three bus all the way to Oxford Street. When I was living and working in London, I'd take the bus all the way to Oxford Street and get out there. So this, you see, is very important. Uh, and um, I can even show it in uh, the same exact map but in plan view, in, uh, sorry, uh, satellite view. And you can get to see the lake, Crystal Palace Lake. You can see it's quite green. And literally it's called Crystal Palace because there was a big, uh, what was it called? Exhibition. And they were going to exhibit things in this beautiful glass structure and of course there was a fire and it burnt down but it's amazing that all this time later you can still see the outline the foundation they haven't managed to do anything with that yet so there we are again nestled in that curve if you study it you can start to see it's quite a little, nice little secluded bit eh you see later as we home in mum chose very well there were various blocks of flats but ours was the one outside the road area no road noise very secluded with a nice view. My gosh, it's a beautifully chosen flat. So I'm happy to tell you more about this because otherwise um, just mentioning Marlow Court is a concept that's just sort of floating without any uh, context. Um, and in fact, I think I'll do it now. I'll, ho I'll home in on the, uh, let's do it now just to go back to the, the black dot of Marlow Court. Make sure this is the right way up. Yes, the black dot. Where's the high street? The high street is uh, Crystal Palace. Exactly. <coughs> All up here. 
This area is the high street where all the shopping and stuff is. Not far to walk. Uh, and you can see these white dots. And I put a black ring around the white dots. They're like little crosses. There they are. There's three more of them there. So these white things, what those are? Those are the blocks of flats. You've seen that the you've seen the view from the side of how it looks. Well, now you can see how it looks from the top. <coughs> there they are. There they are. I think uh, 20, 20 stories? Not more than 20. We know someone on the ninth. Mm, 15 stories high? Something like that. Fairly high. This road sweeps down here, affecting this, this, and this with traffic noise. <clears throat> but not us. We're right in the middle. It even affects this one. Let's have a look. Yes, it does. Because the road sweeps down. Yeah, the road sweeps down here and affects this, 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 and this. But we're completely secluded. And our block is... Uh, yeah, this is, our, this is our block. We are on that uh, side here. It's hard to imagine it. Um, yes, it is. That's it. And so we look out, later you might see the view, we look out to this secluded round bit with people just walking past. Very, very nice. It couldn't have been chosen better. It's just a perfect uh, outlook. Very quiet. She did very well. A very, very nice uh, place to be. So this is the... That's the, um, the Marlow Court that we inhabit. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so I can share with you now those years uh, still managing to have joy with the uh, mid-2018 to mid-2020, these two years when mum was more or less housebound, but not really housebound, because she could still walk. But we have, uh, so now moving ahead six months to the Christmas of 2018, I come again, and look at this amazing spread of festivity that we managed to put on. Crackers, Port, well, Croft's original, a nice meal. And there's mum. A little bit stuck in the house now. But what a privilege for me to be able to spend Christmas with her. Uh, that's actual Christmas Day, obviously, on 2018. And then... Um, we step forward uh, in this, we've got a year and a half left before mum uh, fell and could no longer walk. So, so we step now to uh, my birthday, six months forward from this Christmas picture. Now it's 22nd of June, 2019. I've come again. I've come again to the UK. I'm making it a point to come every six months routinely, without fail. And this is my birthday, and I do believe this would be Mum's very last trip to the grave. I don't think she ever came again, because if it was any later, it would have been too cold, unless she made a trip after I'd gone. But if she didn't, this is potentially the last time. I know she was even struggling to stand very comfortably at that time. And I always used to think that one day mum would be in that grave and I knew it would have been in her mind. And that could this be stopped? How could that be? 
and I, I guess we all struggle with this, it's an unfathomable thought, that she bravely came so many times to visit my father there, put the flowers, sporting her uh, animal jacket. And I couldn't bear the thought that one day they would both be there. But look at her just one more time. And I used to think she's still with me. So that same day we would have got home and Richard, my brother, took this one. There she is looking very chic in her special haircut and I think we're eating, oh we are, jollof rice, moi moi, Nigerian hot pepper stew and red stew and chicken which Richard would have ordered for us and dodo. And see my birthday cards there? How lovely that I had another Christmas with her. 22nd of June, 2019. This would be my last uh, birthday with her, sorry. This would be my last birthday because a year from this date, mum would be more or less in hospital on that day because she fell. What a wonderful honor to have that birthday with her. And if I hadn't have done this project, all these things would have been lost, just sort of memories as I said, we don't have time to go back. It's a luxury, I know. But for my mom, to document her and her beauty, it's something that benefits even me. So, the last birthday, sitting at that table with her, And then we'd had the last Christmas sitting at that table with her just six months previous. Oh, that's not true. Why did I go back? Forgive me for that. Last birthday. Need to go forward. Need to go forward. So that's uh, June 2019. So now, uh, skip forward six more months now. I do apologize once again. This is very important because this really is the last Christmas. This is the 25th of December, 2019. So my mother fell in May 2020 after her 90th. And so I'm honored to have another Christmas with her uh, in Marlow Court, where mum is mainly always in. She wasn't sporting the shortest haircut at this time. And I think all the staying in, it's not that easy for her. And here she is. We have flowers, Christmas presents. I gave her a salt lamp. I think there's a calendar there. And so there we are, enjoying a Christmas together. Most fortunate. Most fortunate. I always would wonder, is it, is it our last? And uh, so that was the Christmas day itself. And then New Year came and went, and this was the 5th of, uh, 5th of December, 5th of January, sorry, of 2020. I would have been uh, about to go back. And uh, there's a series of nice photos. Uh, so these photos would be, have been the last photos I took with my mum while she could still stand and be of her own mobility because very shortly after they were taken I would have gone back and I never saw her again able to walk because during that absence she, she fell uh, before I returned. By the time I returned she'd fallen and Covid was about to hit us. COVID was about to come. So this 5th of January photo I'm about to show you 
was the last because she had her birthday in May uh, 2020, May the 8th, and she fell on May the 30th, 2020, and I was locked out of the country to even get to see her. Um, and I didn't see her again till September 2020, when she was in very poor health. But I'm making another video about that, the last two years of her life. A uh, separate video of those last two years of her life, of her ill health. Um, so here, here it is. There are three of them. They're similar. Cheers, Mom. That's the first one. She's got her salt lamp on. Effervescent mom. Always ready to put a brave face on it. And so sweet and meek and gentle and kind. Cheers to you, Mom. And just before I left, she looked at me wisely and she said, Peter, I can just about take care of myself, just. Meaning all her ablutions, up, clean her teeth, shower, food, heat things, get tea, go from the next room, toilet, bed, makeup, or oh, not that she wore much makeup, comb her hair, and I looked and I thought, what are we going to do? I was thinking. I didn't know what we would do. Little did I know she'd fall and need tremendous amounts of help, which will be the subject of another video. Um, so I printed these out today because I thought, let me cover the last part of my mum's healthy life in Marlow Court. Uh, that takes us to January 2020, um, almost before her birthday, um, on the 8th of May, when she had a magnificent uh, honor as she turned 90, as the whole community gathered uh, at a specific time, 11 in the morning, on her birthday, it was uh, VE Day, celebrating the victory in 75 years of victory in uh, over the Germans when they surrendered. And Mum would have been um, seven. What a joyous birthday she must have had, as I've mentioned. And they waited and did the two-minute silence. And Richard got Mum to come to the window and said, "Look," and then they burst into song. Happy birthday, Betty. What a well-deserved honor. And people not only came from the Malo Court block, but from the surrounding houses. And uh, if any of you are on this uh, site where you're clicking on this video, uh, there is a link where I've posted that video that someone kindly captured of that day of mum being honored. Uh, it's really worth watching. And then the camera goes up to our big bay window and mum goes, and I go, my God, it's the queen. <laughs> Mum's queenly properties were there. Uh, and so, um, <clears throat> with that, that takes us to uh, the end of uh, mum as world traveler. Um, 
and uh, I will have another video that I will do um, where I will capture the last two years of mum's life uh, when I describe uh, her changes um, as a result of the change of her health um, and also her last years um, and her final resting place uh, to document where her final resting place was. Um, suffice to also say that uh, Mum did, she did pass away in the flats. <clears throat> the orange, looking from above. And that's where she, she passed away. Um, but I shall, I'll leave that for the final uh, video that I shall record. Um, and she had one more trip uh, from Crystal Palace all the way down to Box Hill. Even within those two years, we did one last trip. But to be consistent with to be consistent with this narrative, I shall not jump ahead. I shall leave it because it's that trip is within these two years. That trip is within these two years. And even though there was a little bit of travel that we still managed to do, even with her very poor health, I shall leave that for new mum, as I call that section, in my final recording. Because now we have come to 2020, uh, where I've described the Christmas, a uh, new year in January, um, with the last cheers as I left her, a toast to all our travels. Still able bodied, still sound of mind. She's still warning me that she was at the end, she told me. I bought her a stick and implored her to use it. She still fell though. I said she's going to fall. And I flew off yet again, not really knowing that it would be the end of our world travel series and even our travel series, apart from this one trip that you'll see that we managed to do, and which I'm already telling you we did. A special trip to Box Hill, our last trip. I was of a mind to put it into this video because it's still travel, but I've just decided that I will not. I'll leave everything for those last two years, including that bit of travel, for the end uh, of her life chapter, the new mum chapter. So uh, what we've covered today was uh, still mum the traveller, uh, the mum and Pete travel show. <laughs> and how we had some very rich experiences in, right in our backyard, in the south coast of England. It's truly extraordinary. I'm sure if you go out towards Dorset and Land's End, you're still going to see some amazing terrain, some rocky beaches and some... Uh, it's all beautiful and it's so well kept. Really, uh, the Brits have a lot to be proud of that, uh, that this very well-developed nation has uh, managed to keep its surrounds so uh, treasured.
well cared for, valued, and it shows. Just the weather and the unpredictability is the issue, but even the winter trips were bleak if you come prepared and had a, uh, were bleak in a beautiful way, had a sort of, uh, I don't know, inspiring desolation in a way. And I hope to see them again. Um, so, 31 years of mum's world travel, I hope, have been well documented. All the trips out to Australia, Southeast Asia, Qatar. Um, I even touched upon the family trips to Rome. Um, I hope you can see how mum spent the more or less the last 30 years of her life, um, always uh, moving, always uh, positive uh, in a sensible way, always giving. If you pointed a camera at her, she'd shine an emote so that she could give you something. Uh, winning friends wherever she went, uh, stabilizing her son and giving him encouragement, um, giving unconditional love to me as she always has, um, wishing me always the best. I have been incredibly fortunate, really, really fortunate. And as I said, it suited me. Uh, without going any deeper than that, it really did. And I, in turn, have inherited my mother's uh, tendencies because I have many friends. <laughs> um, and I see myself in her, uh, and it's a real blessing for me. I've also enjoyed sharing my father, especially today, those very special photographs at the beginning of my talk uh, that I unearthed, and my grandparents on the Nigerian side, my grandmother, whom I never knew, but without her, I would not be here. And to show my father's progression and how he gave us all such a well-protected life and how he was just such a handsome man, um, accomplished. And I was so proud to have him come and see me in university where he'd been to follow in his footsteps, right in his footsteps. I bet he never imagined his son would be in the same hall of residence as him. And then to show them my mum and dad at cocktail parties in Lagos. What a power couple they were. And then the radius of my mum's life gradually getting less and less, as will happen to all of us. I always think one day the radius will just be your, the bed. As she became closer and closer, but we left off on a toast and a cheers. She was looking a bit frail. And once again, if you have the link to her 90th birthday, uh, that would be something really good. Oh, I do have something to share that I almost forgot. That very last Christmas, the very same last Christmas that we're talking about here. Christmas of 2019, just before we did that toast, I did capture something. Richard had bought Alexa music. I'm always scared if I say Alexa, she'll start answering, but luckily I don't have Alexa. <laughs> and this is not catching mum at her best. We've just woken up. She hasn't combed her hair. She's in her nightgown. And I'll give you a sneak preview. She doesn't actually know the words. But she's getting in the spirit, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. I discovered that I had this video of mum trying to sing along to the Welsh National Anthem. And it'll probably be, hopefully, nice for you to see her moving, to see mum actually moving and really getting into the spirit of her, her roots here, because I do keep going on about her roots, I know, about the Welsh angle. 
So I'll hopefully be able to hold this up to the right location and then you can see in ending um, our last Christmas together while she was still able to have mobility. Sing sang in Welsh. So you can see a very happy moment there and uh, with the family and with mum uh, very near to Christmas Day, looking a little bit not quite ready for the day, but I'm sure you've seen her other beautiful photographs. Um, uh, that more than balance the fact that she was just straight out of bed and slightly disheveled there. But such a joy for me to hear her speak and uh, remember her love for uh, music. And that national anthem, I tell you, when I heard it sung uh, on each occasion at the World Cup, oh, unbelievable. Um, and the crowd, uh, um, even though there weren't that many Welsh uh, people, there were a fair few, fair few, I take that back, but my God, they sang their hearts out. And at the end, when it was all over and the team was going to have to go home, the team came close to where all the Welsh stand was and they sang that national anthem again and some, another song. And you could hear it resonate. It, I filmed the whole thing because I was a distance away across, but I could zoom in. And um, I shall never forget it. Uh, and that national anthem uh, resonated. So this was also uh, picked by the same choir, the Rus choir, up the road from where mum comes from for her, uh, at her funeral service, uh, picked by myself, but uh, sung by the Rus male voice choir. So I'm glad that I remembered to show that uh, an ending to mum's uh, travel days that are now uh, so complete. I think she'd uh, say to you that she was uh, also blessed and happy to have had such um, experiences around the world and able to spread herself. For some reason it's important for me to show where Mrs. Amotashaw went. Where did she go? What did she see? What did she do with her embodiment? Where did those legs take her that in the end could no longer take her anywhere? What did she use them for in all those 90 years to see? And what did she accomplish? Um, she maximized her potential. She did. She was a living example of um, how uh, to use everything you have towards being fulfilled and grateful and uh, 
therefore emanating that state to others who are near you. And it sort of reverberate, reverberates, reverberates if everybody does that, sets up a sort of standing wave. <laughs> she was contributing to that. She was contributing to that um, okayness. Um, when she was negative, it was always because of she was overly practical sometimes. And, but it was a deep sort of... Uh, sensibleness uh, that uh, meant don't take risks you'll regret sometimes and as men we found that slightly different to the way we were wired but other than that she was sweetness and kindness to all that she met and I think she really enjoyed all her travels and I also pleased to say she traveled as much as she could with dad she was always planning these coach trips and going around if dad had not passed away 18 years ago, there would have been much less to the Mum and Peter travel show and more with Dad coming, as he did come twice to Australia. Um, he would have accompanied her where possible, um, but it was not to be. So thank you. Uh, you see, I end slowly because I make sure I don't want to leave you. <laughs> I, and I want to make sure I don't <clears throat> forget to share uh, aspects that later on I'll have to make a video that just adds all the bits I missed but I think we've captured um, Mama's world traveler in fact I'll just end with this showing this a series of mum with whales meeting dad are well covered Nigeria is there the booklet is available for you to click and read or hear me recount it in video uh, and read it out we have this where I've made three separate videos to cover these 30 years. It was far more ornate than I imagined. And then new mum and mum's final, final journey. Um, I shall make that. Uh, and I shall start, when I start that, I shall start uh, talking about uh, Crystal Palace again because it will feature very heavily uh, Marlowe Court. Uh, because, of course, by now she's really housebound in Marlow Court. But we've ended the World Travel Series where she's, the last two years were um, in Marlow Court and not really travelling very much. But I was very glad to share birthdays with her, Christmases with her that I've even forgotten about in those last two years, and her visiting her beloved Femi, his grave for the last time as well, and to capture all those uh, moments. So uh, it's two hours uh, later uh, from the beginning of this video. Thank you once again for your kind attention and interest in the life of Mrs. Elizabeth Betty Omotashaw and listening to me share uh, these stories um, and share the photographs in an unconventional way by just holding them up to you and talking at them. I hope that somehow the essence of mum uh, enters into this and someone gets uh, something out of this story um, of mum's life. And uh, Maybe when I my subconscious gets to work on it later, I'll go, ah, I need to, <laughs> because none of these four parts were planned. I only planned to do the Nigerian story and then the rest grew. I especially wanted to cover her roots and then I literally wanted to show off what else did she do? Well, she traveled all over the place really, and always getting people gifts and sending postcards and forever sending cards and bringing this and bringing through. When she was with me, she was always thinking about others, always, and writing and communicating. And she was never into herself. She wanted to share what she'd seen with others. So I learned greatly from my mom, and I watched how people loved her. I just watched them love her. And I learned a lot. And so through my project here, uh, through learning more about my father and mother, and I realize how fortunate I am to have them in me. Um, and my gratitude for them knows no bounds. I am forever in your debt, dear dad and dear mom. And filled with gratitude uh, for what you have given me. And may I continue it further and pay it forward and uh, be of service as is required in this world in the right way and be a tribute to you and both 
sets of grandparents as well, whose shoulders I also stand on. And I'm glad that I got to show you my father's mother and father this time as well. And so thank you for this uh, opportunity of the project that just grew legs by itself to showcase mum. I feel very satisfied that there's an artifact being left here that shows mum that she does not go quietly into the grave and neither does my father. And my next and last recording will be on mum on how her beauty radiated in another yet different way in her last two years, and hence that video will be called New Mum. Thank you everybody for listening and your kindness. I look forward to meeting many of you personally um, and being continuing our friendship and uh, whatever relationships that we share, may they uh, deepen and continue and ever be present. And uh, you are literally jewels on the tapestry of my life, literally. Thank you so much for you and uh, for your kind attention. Blessings to you all. Goodbye for now.